Welcome to the League Doomhammer Inside Her Show. I'm joined this week, Kevin Bishop, myself, Taylor Eldridge, we got Lane Stanberry, and Kevin Stanberry. It's a little light table this week, guys. Um, I don't know, uh, are we just like not popular anymore, or what do you think's going on? I think uh, the catastrophe we had last week really just... <laughs> Turn people off. We had a lot of a lot people of difficulties. on board last week, and then not a lot of return. Disaster struck. So. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. Well, we are uh, halfway through the season, and pretty much uh, we're going into week seven. Um, we're going to go around and uh, talk about biggest surprises halfway through this season. We'll start with Kevin Stanbury over here. Who's really uh, caught your eye so far? Well, so far he's been a hot topic for this show, but we got to talk about Will again. I don't mm. think any of us thought he would be 4-2 and two at this point in the season, especially starting 0-2, going on a four-game winning streak. I seem to recall uh, Mr. Bishop here saying that Will was the biggest uh, guy prepped for a, like a move up in the standings, and he was definitely was right. Ball. He was definitely right. Elaine, what do you um, think? I, I find it a bit surprising that Will has 689 points yet is still sitting in second. That is uh, a little. That's 80 points uh, less than the person just ahead of him in, in Kevin Bishop. I also think it's very surprising that. Kevin Stanberry has 900 points and right now is sitting in sixth, tied with uh, Tim Stanberry. So that's I think that's pretty crazy we'll that have, we can have huge point scores. We'll have to run the numbers on Will and see what his average has been since he got Le'Veon Bell and Arian Foster back. <laughs> yeah. Um, a team that surprised me has been uh, Jake Garrell. I mean, he's kind of flown under the radar here, and suddenly, I mean, he's 4-2. Uh, and two. He's uh, yeah. looking like he's a pretty good bet to make the playoffs. I mean, even with Big Ben out, Matthew Stafford, kind of a bust. I mean, he rebounded last week. But, yeah, I mean, he's really survived a lot and uh, pieced together, I mean, a pretty good team to start uh, start this season. I think if you would have said, here's what's going to happen with the team that he had entering the season, I don't think you would have guessed he'd be four and two. So he's got some good, uh, good stuff going for him there. Kevin, what about you? I think uh, the team that's the biggest surprise to me is uh, I think Devonta Freeman. That guy's a surprise. Uh, I didn't think he would even start this year, but he's been running through some gaping holes lately. Mm. Uh, no credit to him. <laughs> and Andy Dalton. He's a surprise number one quarterback on the year. Uh, he's a fourteen dollar paid player, you know, shunned by, because of his red hair. But uh, he's performing. I'm gonna say Blake Bortles as well. <laughs> Blake Bortles looking very good. The Blake Bortles, the god, yeah. The god, yeah. And uh, we kind of touched on it there a little bit with uh, Brad. Uh, Brad Piper was actually over at our house last night and. Uh, we got an inside report from uh, one of our sources that said he was uh, claiming to be every bit of the team that I was last season, that, that league championship team, that one loss, longest winning streak, most points. I mean, you guys know it by now. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty well established here. Um, yeah, Kevin, uh, you were there. You were present. Uh, take us uh, through what he was saying there. I was. It was a little bit of a, you know, like a... Hoorah-rah. A hoorah-rah. And, uh, you know, he said his his team was uh, as good, if not better, and it's the same roster construction as you had last oh, year. Oh, interesting, interesting. And, uh, yeah, he, he just said he was a lot better than you were last year, so... Wow, really emphasized how much better he was, yeah. didn't he? Man, um, Stanbury's, what do you guys think about... Uh, the way Brad has constructed his team. I mean, look at this top row of stars right here. Can he match up with that? Um, well, first of all, Brad seems to be making some big headlines this year, calling out Jake about him saying he's not going to make the playoffs. I'm interested to see how that rivalry blooms the rest of this year with them both being 4-2. and two. Uh, um, But as far as his team goes, look, Brad, I like your team. I just... <laughs> It's just not the same team that uh, Taylor had last year, and partially it's because you're not able to trade with yourself like Taylor <laughs> was able to trade with you. So, yeah, he was a good farm team. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I cannot even begin to to fathom how how blasphemous this quote is. I I I, I just don't get it. I, I don't get it. What 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 is he thinking here? I mean, you got look look at all the studs up here. All these guys top five scores in their respective positions. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I just don't get it. I, I can't say I can't say anymore. I just yeah. don't get it. Now, Brad, he does have an uh, an interesting uh, way that he's built his team. A lot. Of, I mean, it gets a lot of heat. I mean, obviously, he's very confident in it. I mean, he goes wide receiver heavy. I mean, he's going to start probably six receivers on uh, on most weeks. So I was going to ask you guys. I mean, what do you guys feel um, about that way to to build a team? I mean, obviously, he feels like he's the best team. Kevin Bishop. I mean, is that what do you think about that way to build a team? Well, I think uh, it's an interesting way to build your team. I think uh, in Dynasty there's some archetypes out there of roster construction. And there's, you know, there's zero running back or zero quarterback in two quarterback leagues, meaning you don't care who your quarterback is. You just try to load up on other positions. Brad seems to have taken a liking to those, both of those and uh, just kind of gotten a, a shamble of running backs, a shamble of quarterbacks. and He's called it good. Calls, yeah, thought his gems at wide receiver could carry him. Uh, and I think it, it'll work. Interesting. Lane, can six top-tier receivers win a championship? Um, it's, anything's possible, Taylor. But uh, I, I think it's... The wide receiver position is, is very risk reward. I mean, you could you could have a stud wide receiver just go off one week and then just not see the ball just because of the matchup. I mean, Randall Cobb the past few weeks hasn't been great, but then again he had a thirty point game uh, the other week. I think it was against Seattle. I don't, I don't know about that, but uh, I'll have to check the stats on that. But any any given week, anyone can can have a dud game, and I think it's more likely for wide receivers to have those dud games. Kevin, so. I mean, can a wide receiver heavy roster. I mean, I obviously, I mean, you wouldn't do that. I mean, but do you feel like that can a team like Brad's win a championship? Well, it's, I think it's important. Like, I, I learned through my own mistakes of making my team, it's important to have a good wide receiver to lean on. There are people that you can hold on to forever that have long and long careers, and when they're good, they can be good for a long time. Whereas running backs often have like a three-year window where they're really best unless they're one of those transcendent ones like um, Jamal Charles or Adrian Peterson unless they get injured. But uh, I was looking at Brad's team here, and it's all about like your ceiling and your floor. Um, when you make the playoffs, I feel like you have to string together um, three wins, two or three wins in a row. And I was looking at his team here, and in the first week he had 111 points. Second week, he had 165 points. Third week, he had 105 points. Week four, he went back to, let's see here, 124 points. And then week five and six, he had 150, and this week I think he had around 170. So this is the first two weeks that he's had consecutive producing weeks. So... I don't know. It's it's tough to say whether that team would be able to keep up with the toughest competition in the playoffs consistently. Yeah. But like I said, your ceiling is so high that you can beat any team in the league. On a serious note, I'd like to talk about something that's uh, close to all of our hearts and I think everyone needs to consider, and it's uh, therapy. And it's uh, the bravest thing anyone can do is to uh, walk into Dr. Hugo's office and admit they need help because they are a struggling fantasy football owner. And it takes courage, it takes heart, and I mean, it's a brave man. It, it takes a brave man to, to admit that they're wrong and they're a bad fantasy football owner. And this week, myself and Kevin admitted that Mm -hmm. it's not about you know there's something wrong with me it's about facing your demons and expelling them uh like an exorcist like my uh like constantine or john constantine Mm -hmm. or the exorcist Mm -hmm. and if lamar odom kardashian would have done this you know he might not be facing his deathbed (laughs) I just want to say that 
I just want to say that I'm really proud of you two guys. These guys are true men of courage and valor. And yeah, that I, pre- that. I appreciate that, Kevin. It took a lot. I totally but, agree. Uh, yeah, it took a lot, but we did it. And uh, here's a here's a peek into how that went. Dr. Hugo. It was the worst it's ever been. You can't have a worse week than Taylor did. The whistle it lost <laughs> its magic. Nobody came when you blew on it? No. It's like it's it it felt like I could feel its magic leaving and as It's it, like your soul leaving your body when you blew on it, right? Yeah. Because you gotta blow it with your soul. All the way in your mouth. All, all the way in the mouth. Come on, dude. You you go, open up your throat. O- open up your throat. I can't do it. You can't open can't your throat? It. You have a gag no. reflex? Come yes. on, you gotta get rid of it. No. You know? No. Get, do, just try it. I did. I don't like it. Right. It also felt like... Like I was sharing my magic with others. Blowing it like you blow on all those dicks, man. Here, put it on. Get it in, get in deeper. Get it in, get in, you're not, it's not gonna get loud if you don't get it all, get all the way in. I feel like the magic that was once in this whistle... Went to who? Who else did it go to? I don't know, would you know? Who'd you go against this week? Would you know if somebody else was using the magic of the whistle? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. You're the only one I give that whistle to. I'm gonna give you this whistle. Really? I've, I've never given this whistle away. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know I'm, how it, that magic would have went to anybody else. I felt like I was getting it. No you were somebody else was magic, using it yeah. other than you? It's not possible. You ever think about, like, doing Big Brothers and Sisters? No. Taylor? Hmm? No. No? Tell me, why not? What's wrong with poor children? They they need to know about fantasy football, don't they? I can't teach them anything. Why? Because I'm in, almost in last place. You were in last place this week? Almost. You can be an example to them of what not to be. Of not to be a loser. <laughs> yeah. You see, you walk in and go, look at that poor fucking sap. <laughs> They're gonna say that? I don't wanna be that guy. I don't want, I'm, I'm gonna make sure my lineup is not fucking god awful. Oh no. You gotta believe. It's like, you know, your dick. Yeah. When you think you can when you think you can get it to work, it'll work. You gotta just believe that it'll work. Yeah. That's a really good analogy, actually. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. When when you need when you need to. When you need to get through, just just try your hardest to do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Doctor Hugo. You're welcome. Here, take my hand. All right. All right. This week. Yeah. My stars are gonna align. Your stars are gonna align. Okay. Yeah. It'll be and like uh, like the equinox. Yeah, or like Orion's belt. Yeah. And it's gonna be Russell Wilson in the middle of that belt. He's gonna be the buckle, and then the strap. <coughs> yeah. What was that? <laughs> okay, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> the straps are 
probably going to be like Tyrod and Alex Smith. And two of them are probably going to be on my bench. All right. <laughs> okay. What about Julio? Julio, yeah, he's going to be uh, the Warriors' arm, his shoulder. <laughs> this feels really good, Dr. Hugo. All right. I'm this... glad. It, I'm glad it feels good to keep using that whistle. Yeah. You're the only one that has it. I promise you, you are the only one that has it. All right, I'll be looking forward to feeling full magic this week. You'll, you'll feel it. Just feel it in your loins. Yeah. Just get it out. Okay, well, I think our our time is up. I paid yeah. you. Yeah. You know, if we go a minute more, you're going to have to pay me extra. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I know you're overtime. No, I, well, I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep drawing this out until we get a minute more. So you have to pay me extra. I'm gonna be transparent really here. This is, I'm gonna just be as transparent as possible. I want to squeeze as much money out of you as I possibly can. So you're stalling. I'm stalling. I want that extra hour. So you're telling me that all this time. That you spend with me, it's like, it's just money to you? No. No? But part, that's part of it. Okay. That's all I need to know. That's all you need to know? Yeah. Just know that I'm always going to be honest with you, Kevin. I'm always going to be honest with you. I feel like that's true. Yeah. And it's true when I tell you that you're the only one with that whistle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Have a good week, Kevin. All right. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Hey. Teach me how to do it. Hey. They be like smooth. What? Can you teach me how to do it? You know why? Cause all the bitches love me. All I need is a beat that's super bumpin' And for you, you, you to back it up and dump it Put your arms out front, lean side to side They gon' be on you when they see you hit that doggy ride Ain't nobody fuckin' with my bro from Mortiside He go by Bubba and he hit that death and thunder okay. I ain't from Dallas but I need town boogie I show my moves on to everybody tryna do me I lead the functions and all the ladies tryna screw me Now you just do you, and I'ma do me Niggas love to hate, so they try to shoot me Bitches be stuck to me, I think they try to gloom me I make the party shine bright when it started gloomy Cause B was bubblegum, so I had to chew it